but even though they can't really kill things like super easily in the late game um, you have other stuff to like help it along right so I think it's a it's a pretty good card um, it it is vanilla right so it's not gonna have as big of an effect as some other eight drops um, but yeah it's decent definitely decent all right a two drop shaman card eternal sentinel three two battle cry unlock your overloaded mana crystals oh boy that's pretty cool we have a swell that does this um, two mana deal two damage unlock your mana crystals that are overloaded right now here's the thing you gotta wonder about dealing two damage is faster right it's fast you can do that whenever you want and you'll have an immediate effect eternal sentinel technically has more value right it it's a 3-2 body so over time this hits once to something it'll do more than the spell would do and the more times you hit with it the better it gets with the same exact effect same cost the only question is is your deck a slower deck or a faster deck if you were running a slower deck you might still run lava shock because even in slow decks you need fast spells like that so the real question is um, how how long can a 3-2 because you're going to be playing this later on in the game right when you play your overload cards because those cost mana and you have to play if you're going to play a bunch of them together you have to wait till the later game to play them right? Uh, so basically how many times can a 3-2 stay alive in the late game and deal damage I think it's probably value if it can attack twice which basically means it'll be going face the first time and then it'll be hitting a minion the second time or it will be hit by a minion and whatever but I think all in all Lava Shock's a better card but this should see play to some degree I think one mana shaman spell evolve transform your minions into random minions that cost one more this seems to be Blizzard's new gift to shamans, this evolve mechanic, this transforming minions into higher cost minions. Um, this is extremely cool, right? Like, um, there is a, I don't remember, I think it was like a Lady Najrath or something like that in LOE, League of Explorers, one of the uh, solo adventures, where um, every turn her minions get buffed to be minions that are one one um, one cost more and yours are replaced with minions of the same cost um, and that was really good for her so this is also really good this heals your minions assuming they survive this will heal them up to full health quotation marks um, and say you have a 5 drop, you attack with a 5 drop, then you evolve, and then maybe you get a Stormwind, whatever the heck that thing is, a 6 mana 4 to a charge, and then you get to attack again. It's pretty good. Um, I think this will definitely see play just because this new mechanic is coming out, this evolve mechanic, and people are going to be very interested in that because we already know the overload mechanic, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, it's really good at burst damage in the late game. You know, when you're just trying to finish something out, like finish off the hero with just like spamming spells. So this new mechanic will really help shamans in the um, the mid game to be able to compete with uh, higher tier um, classes. So this is definitely going to see play. Um, this new evolve mechanic and some of the shaman cards that have been released are so broken. Of course you craft this card. Of course you play this card. It's great. Alright. Here's a card. That's not great. 
Evolved Kobold. Spell damage, spell damage plus two, four mana, two, two. Neutral. This sucks. You compare it to Azure Drake, you cost one more. You lose a spell damage. You gain two attack and two health. And you draw a card. The, the other one's better. I mean, say you're swiping something. And you want the spell damage for your swipe. Would you rather get Cobalt Geomancer or Blood Mage Thalnos and then swipe on turn 6 or swipe on turn 8 when you're dead? Probably the other one. Um, that goes for pretty much any spell. And if spells get big enough, you can't even play these two cards together. This card is so weak, it'll die to anything. Because this effect, it is significant, but only if you play it. It's only significant if it's comboed with a spell on that turn. This is not going to stay up on the board. This has absolutely no board presence. Like, a majority of two drops are better than this four drop. Like, let <laughs> that sink in. Like, this card won't see play. Um, this here, again, I got all freaked out. But then I realized that this is an option from Feral Rage. Feral Rage, by the way, I believe we're seeing later on in the set. It's really good. This here is the other option. The Feral Rage option. Faceless Behemoth. 10 mana, 10, 10 vanilla. Yeah. It's big. It's big. What else do you want to know about it? Um, it's, uh, it has... It does indeed have an impact on the board. You hit someone's face with this three times, they die. Uh, it's very hard to deal with it as 10 health. Tough stuff. Uh, is this better than Cthune? No. Nowhere close. And you get Cthune for free. But it's a big deck. A big deck. It's a big card. Maybe in an Astral Communion deck this sees a little bit of play. You never know. You never know. I mean, even if it's not an Astral Communion deck, this card could see some play. Because, I mean, 10 mana, 10, 10... That's extremely fair, you know? It's basically just like War Golem's older brother. And that's a fine card, I guess. It does die to BGH, but I mean, if you're running this card, you're going to have a lot of other stuff to BGH. I mean, if you run this card, basically your deck is, I'm going to, by some miracle, make it to the late game. Not even some miracle. I'm going to make it to the late game. I'm going to play these big minions, one after another, and I'm going to overwhelm the opponent. This card is actually very similar to um, a card you get from another card, which is really dumb to say like that. It's not that dramatic. Um, this is um, Archthief or Fom, the uh, legendary you get from League of Explorers, 9-7 for 9 mana, battle cry, discover, an artifact. One of the artifacts is give a minion plus 10 plus 10. This is, and that spell costs 10 mana. This is basically that spell, but you don't, you don't need a minion to play it, because this is the minion, right? Like, now, if you had a minion for that spell, it would get charge, kinda, you know? This one doesn't have that, so it is a little slower than that there, that option, you know, but that's a pretty good comparison. Like, people will pick that card sometimes from Arch Thief for Fun. So people will play this card sometimes in late game decks. Alright. Oh, I love this card. Okay, 4 mana, 3-5 for Druid. Fandral Staghelm. This card's insane. I'll tell you why. Because the text says your choose one cards have both effects combined and Blizzard has confirmed that that means like, if I play a Druid of the Flame, it'll become a 5-5 five, five for 3 mana. If I play, um... Oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of that card. Anyway, there's the Druid card that you choose in a 4-4 uh, four, four charge or a 4-6 with um, Taunt. You get a 4-6 charge with Taunt. Um, what else was it? Oh yeah, if you play Ancient of War, you're going to get a 10-10 with Taunt. 
Yeah. This card is insane. People know this card is insane. Off the bat, you can just tell this card is crazy. And this even works for spells, right? Like, what's that? Um, you know, there's that spell. It's like a uh, two mana spell. Summon a 3-2 panther. Give all your minions plus one, plus one. Well, this is going to summon the 3-2 panther and then buff everything on your board if this is out. Like, it's crazy. It's so good. Like, uh, what is it called? Um... Your living roots will deal two damage and summon two one ones. It's insane. It's because this card is so insane that unfortunately it has like a tiny subtext. It's really hard to see, right? Like you have to zoom in, and the text is actually like right here. And this says um, when you play this card, your opponent can only see this card, and it has taunt because there's there's like this is what they're gonna do. They're going to look at this card, and they're going to immediately remove it, no matter what. If this doesn't have pseudo-taunt. This has, like, absolute taunt. You, they will kill this immediately, unless they're dead. Or unless they can't kill it. If they can't kill it, they'll probably concede. I'm not even joking, because the value of this card is just astronomically huge. So, yeah, basically, what you're doing with this is you're going to play this on, like, turn, like, six or seven and you're gonna get a really big minion out of it like you're gonna cheat out a cool effect and then it's gonna absorb some stuff and you're gonna have the minion left over that's huge and you can't silence that minion away or anything you can't do all that nonsense right it's there to stay but that's the card and it's a really good card i am very happy about this card it's it's so fun it's just such a fun card okay uh, let's see here. Feral Rage. This is one of those choose one cards, right? Like, so if you comboed this with this on, like, turn 7, you would get 4 plus attack and 8 armor. That's pretty fair, right? For 3 mana. Well, for 7 mana, but, you know, whatever. Choose one. Give your hero plus 4 attack this turn, or gate 8 armor. Um. This card is versatile. Um. I predict this card will mostly be used to gain 8 armor. Most of the time in the game. Um, especially with the Wombo combo being removed from Druid, there's a very high likelihood that uh, Druid becomes either super aggro scumbag or super, super, super late game. Like, if you thought Ramp Druid was late game, you don't even understand what late game is. Kind of late game. Um, and this does help a little with that. You have Shield Block the warrior card gain 5 armor draw a card and that 5 armor was annoying 8 armor is really great uh, assuming that you have a good 4 drop the next turn or even if it's in the late game this card is versatile and the effects are quite big um, yeah they're pretty pretty good so I believe this will be going into a lot of um, I mean, hey, this makes savagery a little better, right? Kind of gives your hero a whirlwind. <laughs> nah, not really, but... Feral Ridge, it's a card. It's a card. It's a, it's a good card. Alright, here it is. Ah! I know why they made this card. It's because they nerfed Knife Juggler. See, Knife Juggler? Dang, man, I just can't say anything straight today. Anyway, it's because they nerfed left... Gnome, the one mana two one death rattle deal two damage to the enemy hero. They nerfed it down to a one one, so they pretty much cut its damage potential by a little bit um, less than half. That's what they that's what they were doing with it. Fiery bat is kind of like the old leper gnome, but a little worse. It is a beast. But it's death rattle deal one damage to a random enemy. If you're a super face deck, this is worse. If you are mid range, this is better than Lepernum. I mean, while face is the place, sometimes face is not the place, you know? And this is a beast, and it's a one mana beast, so you can, like, kind of trigger your uh, skill commands and your um, other nonsense, because it's a beast and it's really cheap. Um, I mean, probably people just put this in instead of their web spinners, right? Because web spinners are getting removed. They need a cheap beast. 
web spinners a lot better than fiery bat but it probably makes the cut so it'll see play ah uh, yes a balanced card flame wreathed fla faceless four mana seven seven overload for two jeez so it's like a six mana seven seven that you can play on four this isn't even like terrible right because so you play this on four you got a big seven seven on the board your opponent's like holy crap looks like I'm screwed um, but somehow they deal with it right they're gonna waste quite a few resources in dealing with this card uh, and they're probably gonna ignore your three drop that is probably still alive because you know you're decently lucky maybe um, and besides the three fours are pretty hard to kill right they're probably planning ah, I'll kill the three four next turn I'll I'll play a spell to deal with his four damage minion. His four cost minion. And then they realize, holy crap, this is the late game card in the mid game. And now I gotta commit a lot of stuff to this. So then your three drop lives. And then next turn, because of the way mana grows, right? You're on turn five with an overload of two, which means you have three health. Why am I doing that? Three mana left to play, which means you could play feral spirit or something or you could just play um, I don't know twilight elder it's good stuff so you go three four three the three drops have gotten much more powerful with this expansion before I would look into my collection I would say three drops you guys are weak you're necessary as heck but you're kinda weak you're on the weak side now I'm feeling that three drops have their own special place and they're pretty good. But this card is really, really good. You can't leave this alone, right? And are they? What are they gonna do? They're like, ah, shaman. I guess I'll keep BGH in my opening hand. No, they're not gonna keep BGH in their opening hand. That's dumb. Not just to counter this one card. Like they're banking on the chance that you you know, play two of these in your deck. You don't even have to play two of these in your deck. Maybe you're a Reno Shaman deck. I don't know. This probably doesn't go in a Reno Shaman deck. It probably goes in a more aggressive or mid-range deck. But let's just say, right, you run one, then that means they're keeping BGH for a 1 in 30 chance of dealing with this specific card. Or they're dealing with a 1 in 15 chance if you're running two of them. They're not going to do it. They're not going to keep it. They need that tempo for, like, the other... Um... 14 out of 15 times that they have a different card, right? That's not a 7-7 seven, seven on 4, which means this has a pretty big element of surprise to it. And besides the element of surprise, it's really hard to deal with just in general, right? Like, your opponent can't just fireball this because they can't ping it afterwards. They have to trade something into it, which means they have to have something alive. So, which means if you use your 3 to clear whatever they have, basically this minion will roam free on the board. Return, or you get really sad because you face a paladin, and then they Eldor Peacekeeper this card. Then it's a one seven, and you're kind of sad. But then you get to kill all the Silverhand Knights for like the rest of the game. So you're not even that sad. So in short, good card, crafted. It's common. What the heck, Craftus? All right, Forbidden Ancient. So this is like the zero mana spells, right? It actually works the exact same as a zero mana spells. You might look at this and go, oh, if I play this on 10, I get an 11-11. But no, because this costs 1, which means you're only getting plus 9. 9. So this is going to be a 10-10. Math. But anyway, yeah. This card, uh, until you hit, like, 7 mana, it's bad. Because for 6, you want, like, the equivalent of 6-7 worth of stats. And this is your game to be a 6-6. Six, six. Um, and it's a slower card, right? Like, the the mage card, the zero mana that deals a spell, that, the spell is under the curve of normal spells, right? For four, it'll deal four instead of the six. For two, it'll deal two instead of the three. That kind of stuff. Until, of course, ten mana, when it's just a pyroblast. But until that point, right, It it's under the curve. But spells are fast like they're they're cards that you play either in response to a big threat or you play in order to win the game by you know hitting the face something like that this card here 
If you play it at 7 mana, you have broken even with just playing War Golem. Um, I guess it kind of helps, but I mean, I can see a lot of situations where this is just a 1-1. One, one, honestly. Because, I mean, you pull Ysera, and you're like, ah, hmm, should I get a 10-10? Or should I get Ysera and a 1-1? One, one? And you're going to go, ah, Ysera and a 1-1, one, one, please. And then, it's a sad 1-1. One, one. So, because this card is slow, right? Like, the Forbidden Healing card, it's an immediate effect. It heals you for ungodly amounts. The Mage version of the Forbidden whatever, you get instant instant uh, gratification, I guess, with a spell. And then, with the Priest's Forbidden Shaping card, um, the value is higher, right? Because for 5, this is going to give you a 5-5, five, five, right? For five and a priest, you might get pit fighter, which is five six. It's more random, but even if you don't get a pit fighter, there are a lot more five drops. Like you get strangle thorn tiger, which is five five, but it has stealth, so it's better. And that's where this card falls behind. It's because it's gonna just give you a vanilla minion with that cost, which means it's not as good as the other ones. Yeah. So that's it. It's not as good as the other ones. Those are those are pretty good cards though, but I I just don't see this being played, especially because I just said that druids are gonna get super aggro spam, which means they don't really want a one one, right? They don't care. They'd rather have a two one or something, or they're gonna get super late game, in which case they'd rather just play the better version of this minion or the break even version of this minion. So that's what they're gonna do. So they're not gonna run this card. I disenchant this card. Then again, though, technically, if you do Bran on turn 10, you could pull off, that's 3, that's 4, so it'll gain 6, so you could get, so you could get a 13-13, best case scenario. The best this is a 13-13 for 10. Or you could play, you know, Deathwing. You get one less, one less uh, attack, one less health, but you get to clear the entire board, just saying. Alright. <clears throat> okay, here it is. A Warlock spell. Zero. Forbidden Ritual. The other forbidden card. Spend all your mana. Summon that many. One, one tentacles. Oh, man. No. No. This one's worse than that forbidden ancient or whatever we just saw on Druid. Uh, this is just Stand Against Darkness. Because uh, tentacles, they're just tentacles. They don't have any benefits. Yeah. You want a lot of one ones? Have some one ones. Have a, have have some one ones. Thing is though, if this was the druid card, that'd be pretty cool because they have savage roar and they have cards that buff their cards like mass buffs. Warlock. I mean, they don't really have that. So, forbidden ritual, pretty bad. It's um worse than the other one because at least that one's stacked on one thing, right? So. Any board clear kills this. Anything at all. Well, how, what do you really want? Do you want five one ones or something? Congrats. You can deal at most five damage with your one ones. I don't know. I think I've said enough about these one one businesses. They're just bad. Disenchant this. If you get this, you're like, yay, hundred dust. Noel. This is what's summoned. Um, this is what's summoned from. Corrupted Hogger or whatever his name was. Hogger Terror of Elwin or something like that. So yeah, this is what it looks like. It looks like the old gnolls that Hogger summoned, but it has like these weird like things coming out of it. Yeah. Okay, grotesque dragon hawk. Seven mana five five beast. Um what well, we have Wind Fury Harpy, six mana four five with Wind Fury. That does not see play. Um, and in this one here, we have one, we have one cost more for two more attack, right? Because the win for you will stack the plus one attack, so it'll be two. It's also a beast. Okay, I'll give you that. But if I play, if I play one for your harpy on six, and I get to deal eight damage on turn seven. I would rather do that than playing the... 7 mana card and being able to deal 10 damage on 8. 
right? Because 8 one turn earlier is a lot better than 10 a turn later. It is a beast, but because it's so cost, it has such a high cost, it doesn't really matter if you're playing Hunter or Druid, I guess. Um, yeah, this card won't see play. I like, though, how they took the little tiny 1-1 one, one when Fury Fire, Dragonhawk, or whatever, they like made them all bigger and grotesquer. That's not a word, but whatever. I like the idea, but in practice, this card is free dust. Alright, 4 mana, 3-6. Another one. Another one. Anyway, whenever a character is healed, give your Cthulhu plus 1 plus 1, whatever it is. Alright, so this card is not as good as you probably think, first of all. This is one of, like, the only Cthulhu cards that I'm actually going to say is probably not going to see much play. Do you, do you want to know why? Well, because... <clears throat> This is really good with Circle of Healing, right, if there's a lot of minions on the board. That's when Hooded Acolyte's really good. And that does come up quite a few times, but Holy Champion is better in that situation. Also, because it's like immediate. Also, most of the time you're just going to be healing yourself for plus one, right, every time. Um, again, the... Uh, Okay, let me think of this better. Circle of Healing works really well with Akanai Soul Priest because it's the biggest board clears that uh, priests have. They have excavated evil now, but four is really good. Like four, four, uh, four attack board clear on everything is a lot better than a five mana three attack board clear on everything. Um, so the four spot in priest is already pretty heavy. Uh, the there's a four two with divine shield that just gives Cthulhu plus two plus two right then it's guaranteed, and then you have the cards that when they take damage and stuff, um, they uh, will be buffing Cthulhu as well. This one here, if you want a guaranteed heal, you either have to have damaged minions um, on turn four, so you can um, hooded acolyte, circle of healing to buff your Cthulhu, uh, let's say about five or six times, which is really good, don't get me wrong, that's really good, but if you don't have that situation, then you have to play this on turn six, if you're, if, I'm saying if you want to guarantee the buff happening, you have to play this on six and then heal yourself for two and then give your Cthulhu plus one, which is a weak turn. So, I'm going to say this card is a little bit too weak to see a lot of play. If this was like whenever a character is healed, do this crap, battle cry, heal a character for two, then this one would be really good because then you'd you'd get a guaranteed plus one plus one. But because it doesn't say that, it's a little weak. Icky tentacle. Let me look at this. Yep, this is the card that is summoned by forbidden tentacles or whatever. Forbidden ritual. My bad. You see, it's just blank. Ah, uh, this is a card that I was, like, really excited about. Uh, Infested Wolf, 4 mana, 3-3. Three, three. That's pretty weak. Death Rattle, Summon 2, 1-1 one, one Spiders. This is a beast. So this is basically just bulkier Haunted Creeper. People are going to be like, uh, whatever. I mean, Haunted Creeper was good, and it was in a lot of decks, but it really wasn't that good. It was just, like, one of the best two drops. This is a 4-drop, man. You've got to be a little bit more aggressive than that. You're playing Hunter, for Christ's sake. But look at this. Well, it's not the next card. Anyway, spoilers alert. The 1-1 one, one spiders at this summon are beasts. Which means you get to trigger all your beast cards off of it. Which makes it insane, because the Hunter Creeper spiders weren't beasts. Only the Hunter Creeper was. This time here, it's like little Savannah High Main. Because the things are a beast, so you can trigger everything off of it. So this card is insane. This card is so good. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't really trade up very well. It trades down very well. The thing is, though, you're playing a hunter, right? I see this in a lot of aggressive decks. Um, 
because duh, it's Hunter. But anyway, one, two, three, your opponent's trying to catch up. You play this card, and your opponent goes, oh, thank you. You played a, a weak four drop. I can now stabilize the board. Then you get your two one one beast spiders. You get to, you know, do some cool beast stuff, maybe some hound master or some anything with beast synergy. And then your opponent's like, ah, shucks. He got me. Or this is in the late game, and your opponent, you play this, and then you get him down to 5 health, and you have like 25 health because you're a hunter and you're, you know, a hunter. And the opponent goes, crap, he's got he's got kill command in his hand because he's a hunter, and that's what always happens. They're going to look at this card, and they're going to kill it, right? And then they're going to look at the spiders, and they're going to go, oh, they're also beasts. And then they have to be able to kill that, and they might not have thought about that beforehand. And then, of course, even if they do that, you're a hunter, and you'll probably just play your little 1-mana 2-1 fiery bat thing and just kill command him anyway. But the point is this card has extreme value. It's like a 4 mana 5-5, five five, kinda. Kinda. So that's value. Um, if these here weren't beasts, I'd say this card is weak, but these are beasts so it's really, really good. Just think of like the uh, the 1 mana 1-1 one, one timber wolf, right? It'll give these things like attack buffs. I mean, you think of Houndmaster, you think of, like, um, you can you can trigger the uh, the 5 mana 3-3 three, three summon a random beast off of it. I don't know what that card is called because I'm a little slow today, but you can trigger that off of those spiders. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of synergy possible. Okay. Journey from below. Journey below, sorry. Rogue, one mana card. Plenty of those in Rogue. Discover a Death Rattle card. Um, it's okay. Uh, let me think here. Museum Curator, pretty good. Um, this is really good in Raptor Rogue, right? Um, yeah. It's probably pretty good, because... The um, Museum Curator, a 1-2 is generally regarded as a 1-drop, and that thing costs 2. So you're basically, in that card, you're basically getting, you're playing this card and a 1-2. So, yeah, it's just a little cheaper version of Museum Curator, you don't get the body. Um, generally, because the card isn't mashed together like Museum Curator, it should be a little worse. But in Rogue, with Raptor and stuff like that, this is probably going to be included in a lot of decks. Even if it wasn't in a lot of decks, just the fact that you can, you know, most of the time you can tech this. I mean, sometimes you get, like, really screwed. But I mean, once they, actually, really, once they remove all the good death rattles, um, not, I, I mean that, you know, it's a joke, but it's actually really hard to get screwed by this card, so I think it'll be played. <clears throat> Seven mana, six five warrior legendary Malkorok. Look at that! The uh, little weapon here looks like it's coming out to like poke you. Um, stats suck. Let's get that out of there. Um, the random weapon is good because look, Blingtron. Yeah, your opponent usually got a better weapon than you because uh, you're never lucky, right? But this one here, you at least get to keep all the the funsies to yourself. Six five is um <clears throat> that's basically like a five. It's like five um it's like five cost worth of stats, and then the weapons that you get, sure you get curse blade every once in a while and you just lose, but most of the time you're going to get something that's really good, and it'll at least break even with a 2 mana deficit, or it'll go higher. So I think Mal Korok is going to see some play. This is the um, 
This is the thing you get from uh, that druid card, the seven uh, one one wisps, which won't be played. Uh, this is your. This isn't. Yeah, this is created by on the hunt. So this is just the card you get from that beast. Good stuff. There we go. All right. So four mana, one four dragon. Gross. Midnight Drake. Gain one plus attack for each other card in your hand. This is like Twilight Drake, but a lot worse. Um. So Twilight Drake, you're guaranteed the attack. I had to work for the health. This one here, you're guaranteed the health, and you have to work for the attack. And so this means this card is slated to be an aggressively set minion. But the only problem with that is, is that if you're holding a lot of cards, you're a defensively set deck, which means it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, this card is pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. There's a dragon though. Small Deathwing Dragon Lord synergy. Ah, uh, then you get your nice one four for free. And you basically don't get anything for free. Anyway, moving on. Nate the Dragon Fisher. The Dragon Fisher, the Dark Fisher is what I meant. Two mana, two four. I like that. I hated the zero four just sitting there. At the start of your opponent's turn, they have a 50% chance to draw an extra card. So, if you're going up against an aggro deck, they're not going to kill this. But you're going to kill it because you're going to realize that, holy crap, you're losing. In a mill rogue deck, your opponent's going to kill this because they don't want the, uh, the never lucky chances for them. In a control setting, you're going to kill this card. So pretty much the only... Unless you're in the Super Fatigue War, right? Then in that case, you save this card for like the very last card, and you play it when they don't have anything to really respond to it with, right? Hoping that they don't have like uh, anything that has above 4 attack. Yeah, anyway, but... So yeah, pretty much the only time you don't kill this card is when you're in Fatigue War or you're playing a mill deck. And then, of course, you only have... A chance of it being actually good. Uh, a 2 4 is technically playable. Because, I mean, a 2 3 is playable. Um, so, 2 4, yeah, it should work. But then this drawback, it's like kind of gross. Because most of the time, this is going to be really bad because your opponents will be luckier than you, so they're going to win the, the chance more. So, I, I won't ever play this card. I mean, in a mill deck, it's going to get, like, one tick off. Maybe two. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Six mana, four, four, Nerubian Prophet. At the start of your turn, reduces cards cost by one, right? So, say, the Dream. You keep it in your opening hand. Okay, then, it goes down to five after turn one. Then, after two, it goes down to four. After three, it goes down to three. And then, for three mana, you get a four, four. So, this is actually a three drop. This is a 3 mana 4-4 four, four if you get it in your opening hand. So it's really good. Yeah. It's great. It's a fantastic card. What else can I say? It's great. And if you pull on the late game, you really don't want to play it for 6, right? But I mean, if you play it for 4, it's break even. Yeah. So if you play it early game, it's really good. Turn 3 is the goal. Um, I mean, sure, you could play a turn four, and then you have a two thing, and you could maybe play a two drop or something with that. That's pretty strong. So, yeah, this is a good card, Nerubian Prophet. The, the earlier you draw this card, the better this card is going to be. On the hunt. Uh, hunter, one mana. Spell, deal one damage, summon a one one Mastiff. That was the Mastiff we saw earlier. Mastiff doesn't have charge or anything stupid like that. Um, technically, this card is not bad if, you know, <coughs> the dream, right? They're at 6. No. No. They're at 8 health. Then you, on the hunt, hero power, kill command. A easy game, right? <laughs> that is a possible thing to happen. 
but you can easily, easily, easily compare this to um, Elven Archer. The 1-1 one, one battle cry deal 1 damage. It's basically the exact same thing. Um, yeah, Elven Archer does not see much play. This card probably won't see much play. It is a beast, which means it has a higher likelihood of seeing play. But, I don't know. It just seems a little underpowered. In a lock and load deck, this card's pretty good. Kinda. If a lock and load deck is good, then this card will be... This card will see play in a lock and load deck. If that sees play or not is... Questionable. Ooze. This is 7 by Bilefin Tidehunter. So this is the cute little guy that you get from that 6... No, that 2-mana uh, 2-1 two Murloc. Power word tentacles. Give a minion plus two plus six. I really like this card art. But anyway. Uh for five mana, that kinda sucks. You have the uh three mana valence chosen for two four. This is two six for two extra mana. I'll pass. I just don't think it's powerful enough. This buff on turn five isn't justifiable. Throw this card in your deck. I'm I'm saying it. Um, yeah, that's about all I gotta say about it. Primal Fusion. Give a minion plus one plus one for each of your totems. This card is not very good. <coughs> um, even if it's a charge minion, and we do know like you can play Totem Golem, Tuskar Totemic, and then Hero Power, of course, to get your totems. But we saw that one card that gained plus one plus one for each every totem on the board and that card was not played so this card will not be played and this card actually costs less but this card also is minion dependent technically though you could just give it to a totem I guess that works too right but I so this card is I guess slightly faster than the other card but actually the other card got bigger right because it had base stats that were higher than 1-1 one, one. Actually, yeah, no, the other card was a lot bigger than this card. And this card requires you to have totems to even do anything. So this actually means that this card is worse. This card, if you have the same exact scenario, this card is faster, but worse. And if you don't have that scenario where you have totems on the board, this card is unplayable, so it won't be played. <coughs> Psychotron, the uh, like weird version of Anoyatron. 5 mana, 3, 4, mech, taunt, divine shield. Um, Anoyatron well, had a 1, 2 stats with that text. 1, 2 is a 1 mana stat. We paid 2 mana for the effect. This one here, you're paying for a really good 3 drop, but you're paying 2 extra mana for it, which means this card isn't going to see play. It's not as good as Anoyatron. And for 5 mana, you could have that, um, what was it, that 3, 6 that buffed Cthulhu a lot, which is a lot better than this. And also, just even if you don't play that card in your deck, um, I don't remember it, but there's a 6 mana 4 5 with Divine Shield. I'd rather wait 1 mana to get the better card. <coughs> Rally and Blade. I'm assuming this is Paladin. Battle card give plus 1 plus 1 to your minions with Divine Shield. So basically, if this card sees a lot of play. Then Paladin starts spamming a bunch of Divine Shields, making everyone mad. And then people play the uh, Blood Knight card that like steals Divine Shields and gets a huge buff out of it. So, you have a Hunter card like this, right? Um, <coughs> Eagle Horn Bow. 3 mana, 3 2 weapon. And that, it's good when you have a secret, right? So, it's like... You pay two mana for the card to be good. You can do this with. Um... Actually, no. This is worse because you have to have minions. Because Eagle Horn Bow can like continually grow throughout the game, but this one here, it's like a one-time shabow kind of deal. So unless you have a board full of divine shields, this one isn't even that good. Rusty Hook. This is what warriors get off of their pirate card. The um, 
I don't remember what it is, but it's a one mana one three. Equip this rusty hook. It's not bad. Selfless hero. Death rattle. Give a random friendly minion divine shield. Well, this goes really well in the divine shield deck. Am I right? Uh, the stats are fine. Death rattle. Most of the time, you're never going to be able to trigger this death rattle. But on the occasion it hits a minion, it's pretty freaking great. So, this might see play in a very Divine Shield heavy kind of game, or in a very controlling Paladin game. Shadow Beast, this is what you get summoned from Possessed Villager. Shadow Strike, deal 5 damage to an undamaged character. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's has to be undamaged, right? But this kills any 3 drop. Kills most 4 drops. So it's value. So it'll see play. 2 mana mage card, shatter, destroy a frozen minion. This is an unnecessary card. Uh, the 2 cases where minions are frozen are pretty much going to be... Um, going to be the um, Frost Nova Doomsayer combo or the Blizzard into Flame Strike combo. And in both of those cases, you really don't need to destroy the minions because you're going to die anyway. So this card is unnecessary and I do not think it will see play. Which means you can disenchant it. Um, this Solithid Swarmer. 3 mana, 3, 5. Can only attack if your hero attacked this turn. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, so basically this only goes into Shaman, Warrior, Paladin, Hunter, maybe. Just think of the possibilities. Um, you know what's a lot more common than a hero attacking, though? Um, the hero using the hero power. And we saw the 3-mana uh, the 3-3... Three three, three guy, I can see my house from here, guy. He gained Wind Fury whenever you hit the button. This guy here gets to attack once if your hero attacks. Uh, this has the most potential in the new Pirate Warrior deck. Even so, there are going to be a lot of times when you don't have a weapon to play. And it's not like it's like charge if your hero attacks this turn too. No, it, you still have to wait a turn. So it's just too slow and it's too unpredictable and it's not going to see play. Yada yada. Disenchant. Serverhand Merlock. This is, uh, that looks hilarious. But anyway, this is what you get if you, um, if you change your hero power out to summoning Merlocks. And we talked about that earlier, so. This slime here, there are many different kinds of slimes. This one is created by Meyer Keeper, the 3-3. Three, three. This one here is created by Infested Torrin. And this one here is created by Blood of Ichor, right? So there you go. The slimes. This one here is the best slime to get, right? Like, the card is the best that generates this one. Okay. Rogue. Uh, 4 mana, 4, 4. Death will give your weapon 2 plus attack. Pirate. This has decent enough stats to be played without many regrets. It's very likely as Rogue you have a weapon on you at all times, which means you're almost guaranteed the death rattle. So, it's a good card. It's also a pirate, and we know rogues in the past. There have been pirate rogue that has been successful. So, this card will indeed see play to a certain degree. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. It's a good card. It's a good 4-drop. If you're not playing Cthulhu Rogue, then, uh, yeah, you'll probably be playing South Sea Squid Face for 4. It's honestly, like, if you thought of this as, like, a... 2-1 creature. It's like... It's like Shredder, but, like, kind of kind of worse. You know? Like, 
getting a 2-1 out of a shredder, I don't know, it's probably possible, but, you know, it's pretty, pretty bad, but it, it is kind of still like shredder in a way, you know. Spider, this is the thing that gets triggered off of the uh, wolf card I was talking about earlier. Squirming Tentacle. <clears throat> Three mana, two, four, with Taunt. Hmm. Well, I remember uh, No Merman Infantry or something like that was a 3 mana 1 4 with charge. That didn't see play. Is a 2 4 taunt without charge going to see play? Hmm. Well, it's better than Iron for Grizzly, right? It's, you know, that's a 3 3. It's a little better than that. At least. Um, most two drops can't kill this. I think some two drops can probably kill this. Yeah. It's good at protecting your face from early game. It's about it, though. I think it's weak. There are a lot of better three drops, especially now. I don't think it'll see much play. It might in, like, Druid. Druid and um, probably just Druid, I think. This one. Ah, uh, Stormcrack. Two mana shaman spell. Deal four damage to a minion overload one. Good stuff. That's a good card. This kills pretty much every three drop. It kills a few four drops. Heck, technically, it even kills some five drops. It's a good card. It is only to minions, right? But shamans are going to become a little bit less face, 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 and a little bit more control the board. So this card is probably going to be okay. Not great, but okay. Um, five mana, six five. Twilight Dark Mender. Battle cry: If your Cthulhu has at least ten attack, restore ten health to your hero. We know this is easy to do, as we've talked about before. It's a really, really good card. This one. Um, you get, it's like anti heal bot, but you're gonna get a plus three, plus two on your heal bot, and a plus two boost of the attack, boost of the health, restore to your hero, so it's insane. Sorry. <coughs> this is the thing that you get uh, out of the shaman weapon. Um, yeah, so that's a really good weapon. This is going to be seen a lot. Twilight Geomancer, 2 mana, 1 4 with taunt. Yeah, gross, gross. Battle Cry, give your Cthulhu taunt wherever it is. Yeah, that's worth, because this is basically, like, insane. Um, people would have traded it into your Cthulhu regardless, but now when you play Cthulhu, if you don't clear their board and they had lethal, well, now if they don't have spells, they don't have lethal. So, this is going to go to pretty much every single Cthulhu deck, I think, because the effect is so great. You can actually just play this on turn 9. You have Cthulhu in your hand, you play this on turn 9. You play your 8 drop, or your 4 and your 3, and or your 4 and your 2, and a hero power, whatever, you know. And then, you pretty much won't die for the next turn. So that's that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. Twin Emperor Vecklor. 7 mana 4, 6. It's pretty gross with taunt. Mm, still pretty gross. Battle cry. If your Cthulhu has at least 10 attack, really easy to do, as we've said before. 7, another Emperor. And this is this. Oh, wait. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Turn 10. Brand bronze beard, and you get three, four sixes with taunt. Hmm. Hmm. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, these things escape. Board clears. Their four sixes. Priests cannot deal with them with cheap spells. Mages can fireball them, but they probably don't want to fireball both of them. Right, because they want to be able to finish your face off with the fireball in most cases. 
this stops most aggro cold because they have to go through 12 amount of taunt 12 stats of taunt health um, and they can't just do it in one shot with something huge and there's a four attack on each one so you're basically getting a seven mana eight sixteen with taunt and that's insane this card is broken as long as your Cthulhu has least ten attack here's the thing about crafting this card if you want to play a lot of Cthulhu decks yeah this card's fine the only thing is this card is only good in a Cthulhu deck because seven mana four six is abysmally terrible yeah. So, if you want to play Cthulhu, 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 a lot of Cthulhu, or you know, you just like get a deck off the internet with a Cthulhu, and you say, oh, this is in it, and I guess I'll put it in, and maybe you craft it. But for people who are like super budgeted, like me, and I, I'm sure a lot of other people out there, um, yeah, this card is. It's a little bit expensive, eh, you know. Twisted Worgen 3 1 with stealth. This is actually a control card, by the way. Uh, the other card was, I believe, also meant for control, but people use it for aggro. Unless you're in arena, then you used it for control as it was intended to be used. This here is used to trade up for three drops and keep your two drops alive. Now that is slow, right? But it's also a viable play, especially now when three drops are getting very, very powerful. Being able, if you're a mage, to you know use this to clear off a, uh, a three. I'm assuming, of course, that you coin out a two first, right? You coin out a two, then you play this card. You hit their three, or their two, or whatever. And then, or, and then you're paying it down, because maybe it has a 4 health, because those are becoming a lot more common. Um, yeah, whatever. It's control. Sorry, guys. I'm a little sick. Pretty tired. I'm not thinking too straight. My math's probably off, like, by a mile, but whatever. Uh, Usher of Souls, 5 mana, 5, 6 for a warlock. Whenever a friendly minion dies, give your Cthulhu plus 1, plus 1, whatever it is. This is... This is a lot worse than some of the Cthulhu buffing cards. A lot, a lot worse. Um, 5 mana, 5, 6 is a very good stats, though. Like, uh, that's really good. Even if even if nothing dies, you know, before this thing. Uh, it's still pretty good. And you can control this kind of. If you have minions on the board, you can play this in turn 5, and then sack all the minions, and then buff your Cthulhu. That's true. And then you get super value. But I mean, just standalone, it's a 5 6 common. Which means it's basically Pit Fighter with the potential to be better, which means it's a great card. Some more Wisps for your pleasure. Yogg's Ron's Magic. Gain an empty mana crystal. This is from Mire Keeper. Yogg's Rogue Strength, also from Mire Keeper. Zealous Initiate. One mana, one one. Give a friend, give a random friendly minion plus one plus one. I believe this card may be okay. No, not really. It probably won't trigger very often. Yeah, there are better one drops out there. I don't think this will see play. And that's it. This was our last card that's been released. We have reviewed 161 cards. They said they are going to release 174, which means there are 13 cards left, which means the next review shouldn't take an hour. I'm sorry, guys. I keep making these things way too long, and I'm wasting time now. But thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that all of this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.